Microsoft really wants you to have an online account. Like they really want you to connect your Microsoft account to your operating system so that it can be more like a Google Android device where you just, you sign up, all your apps are the same from phone to the other. You're, you know, you're tracked all the time. That's what they really like. They want to know what you're doing. But to be fair, Microsoft says that all the tracking data is generic. It's not tied to your user account. It's not tied to your name and address and social security number and all that stuff. Do you believe them? It's really difficult to tell these days. Your data that's online is worth more than you are as a human being to all these corporations out there. Thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. You can get 25% off Windows and Office with coupon code TS25. So they've got Windows 10 Pro, they've got Home, you've got Windows 11, Office 2021, 2019, and this is the one I use, 2016, because it still works very well. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. So that's the price that we pay here for the OEM key. If you go over to Microsoft's store and we get the same key, Microsoft Windows 10 Pro, it's $199. Um, it basically unlocks all the features in the operating system. But one's a retail key and one's an OEM key. So what is the difference there? Well, OEM keys were designed to be bundled with hardware and then sold to you. And, and essentially, when you buy an OEM key, you become your own hardware vendor. You are the manufacturer. You're going to be providing your own tech support and then you get that OEM key. It's going to be locked to your motherboard. So that's the main difference. Now, $200 for the ability to move to multiple different systems. Let's do a little bit of math here and see how many different systems you'll have to move to before it becomes cheaper to get the retail CD key. So you will have to buy 12 CD keys. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. So thanks to them for sponsoring, and now to our regularly scheduled program. So let's break down the pros and cons of all of this. It's gonna sound like I'm a little bit negative towards online accounts, but if you wanna use one, because that's where we're going, that's the modern you know, age, everything has an online account, you sign into everything using an online account, and a lot of people are gonna yell and scream that that's why Windows is so good. So we'll talk about the pros and cons, and I will be fair. First off, let's talk about what's nice about having an online account. Anytime you get a new computer, if you have multiple computers and you sign in with the same online credentials, which are your Microsoft credentials, well, it will pull all of the different apps, like the modern apps from the Microsoft Store. It'll pull all those apps, install them. It will set up your customizations in your operating system. It will change your user account, uh, you know, your icon or your avatar and all that kind of stuff. It'll basically set up your desktop for you in just a few seconds. And then you also have five gigabytes of data where it will sync your documents drive or whatever you want. You just have like some data that you can store so you'll have persistent storage across different devices. Now, the Microsoft accounts are relatively secure, especially if you're using two-factor authentication. But if something goes wrong, well, you know, you're going to need an internet connection you're going to have to go and try to figure out how to change your Microsoft account password, which is not too hard to do, but I've heard of some people getting locked out and it taking about 15 minutes to get logged back in to, you know, change their password, get their, get their account back up. Um, if your account gets frozen for any reason, I'm not sure what would cause that, but just it can happen because you are not in control of this. And there's not a lot of precedent for this, but this is a theoretical possibility. If someone were to compromise your Microsoft account, somehow get your name and password, if you use the same name and password for all kinds of online stuff, that is a huge security issue. If someone were to get their hands on that, they could not only get into your Microsoft account, but they could potentially find you and get a, get their hands on your physical stuff. Maybe they could browse your you know the files that you're saving in your documents, your sensitive data. But if they could get their hands on your actual laptops and stuff like that, they could easily log in if they had your credentials. Now, with an offline account, you lose out on a lot of those benefits, but you gain the ability to lock down the machine on your own. You're in full control of it. You can use it offline and you can use it any way you like. Now, this is better for people who, um, in my opinion, really know what they want to do with their machines and they want to do different things with all of their machines. They don't need the same apps installed on every single machine. They don't, you know, want to have their data backed up to the Microsoft Drive because they're doing something like I'm doing. They're using their NAS 
to back up stuff so that they can you know install the you know the specific software whatever it may be uh, so that they can have that data backed up on all their different devices but this is a manual process i'm doing it myself you'll be doing it yourself and then you can lock it down and make it as secure as you like it it's not going to be always well i mean microsoft is always doing things with their telemetry but it won't be as uh, perfectly connected to microsoft and another thing on the login screen it will not show your email address if you're like at a coffee shop or something like that and you have uh, you know like a, a regular microsoft account and you're logged in like that it usually shows the you, you know your email address right there on the login screen it's like why would you do that now that i've talked about the pros and cons of the two i'm going to show you how to sign in with a local account if you've already signed in with an online account all right so hit start and then just click on your your little icon here and click on change user account settings and click on accounts click on your info right here scroll down and right there you'll see sign in with a local account instead click on that it's like oh no don't do this to me you have to put in your password again this is the password from your microsoft account this is not anything else now it wants you to create a new password and a username so this is going to be the username that you log in with so new password this this is your password only for this machine this is not an online password so don't forget it my password is help so it's going to sign out and finish it signs out and then signs you back in signs me back in there we go and the pin number still worked which is really cool because the pin number is local i forgot about that earlier but yep that works and now we are a local account if you want to get rid of drive and all that stuff then you can do that you can you can uninstall it so that's how you make your account local but what if you want to install windows 11 and start with a local account you don't want to ever have that footprint of the first time connecting with a new machine when you get to the screen it comes right after you select if you want to do a personal or work just pick whatever you like and then right here you do sign in options and click on offline account and that's still available right now but um, you know what if in the future that's not available what if there's no way to get around that you know I've heard rumors that in the future they're gonna force you to have an online account with Windows 10 even Pro Windows Home uh, probably is a mess well there is a way to go and get an older copy of the Windows installation media if you already have an older like USB stick or something like that just hold on to it because that one in the installation process um, it should it should allow you to log in especially if you just make sure your internet's unplugged because there's that little spot it starts looking online and saying like hey are there any updates well if it's not plugged into the internet and it's not connected to wi-fi and you're using your old usb then you won't have to worry about that if you don't have an old usb with a copy of windows 11 on it or something like that there's a website we can go to and i'll show you that and i'll show you how to get that installed onto a usb flash drive I'll put the link in the description. It's called tb.rg-adguard.net. This is a safe website. You come up here and pick Windows 11. And I picked the first version of Windows 11 right here. And then grab the Windows 11 English ISO. You pick your language and all that stuff. And then you download it, which I'm doing right now. Now, once it's finished downloading, if you want to put it onto a USB stick, it's a little bit different than using the Windows Media Creation uh, tool. What you need to do is use a program called Rufus. Now, Rufus is great because it allows you to burn essentially any ISO file onto a USB stick. I say burn as if we're actually burning something on there, but it allows you to write them onto the USB drive so that you can use it as installation media. Now, what we're going to do is just download Rufus. Come down here, download Rufus 3.2. I always do this. I always want Rufus portable because it just you just click it and it opens. Hey, there it is. Rufus portable. And then I'm going to select right here. Select that Windows ISO and then I'm gonna put a USB stick in there it'll it'll recognize the device up here and then you just click on start I'm not gonna go through this it's pretty easy because I don't need to go through this but that's how you put this on to a USB stick so you can install Windows from it so hopefully this is three years in the future and the we can still like you know click on options and then go and use an offline mode but if not hopefully that other little part of the tutorial works but I hope it's not relevant let me know what kind of account you use and why. Do you use an offline or do you use an online account for your Windows installation? Let me know. I'm curious. See you in the comments.